Elfes Festival 2024, encore une fois des interviews, on vous régale euh, sur, euh, dans Bang Bang et sur SLS avec euh, Alex. Et là, on reçoit euh, un groupe incroyable, je les adore, Rival Sons. Bonjour messieurs. Bonjour. Good to see you. Bonjour. <rire> Alors déjà, merci beaucoup euh, d'avoir accepté euh, l'invitation et, et de venir nous voir. Thank you very much for being with us. It's an honor. We're happy to be here, man. The honor is <laughs> Hell, ours. Yeah. Hellfest is great and, you know, this is the last, uh, the last day of the festival this year. Oh. And I mean, there's so many people here and the lineup today is fantastic. You know, getting to catch up with all of your friends, talk with you guys. What's not to like? Qu'est-ce que ça vous fait euh, d'être dans un festival comme le Hellfest, qui est un festival à la base euh, métal, hein, euh, métal lourd? How does it feel to be in a heavy metal festival, a kind of extreme festival like Hellfest? It's not a classic rock fest, you know? It feels good to be uh, different. Yeah. It's nice. It's cool. Um, I appreciate all these heavy acts. I'm a fan of metal. We like this stuff too. Um, so, like Jay wrote over here with with friends and Mr. Bungle, who doesn't love Metallica? Uh, Queens is playing today. Uh, Royal Blood. There's so many great heavy acts. Yeah. Also caught some Chelsea Wolf yesterday. Fantastic. She was fantastic. Super great. So, yeah. Every year we've been here. It's our fourth year. Fourth. Yeah. Every year we've been here. It feels like this. Like we're we're like kind of like a little outcasted from the the genre of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Not totally, completely. Being a band that signed to Earache Records years ago, we have been kind of circulating with metal festivals and metal audiences, and it goes well. Mm -hmm. It's really trippy, you know. Like for us, we are we're not a metal band. We just we just aren't. But we're adjacent to it, so it kind of feels like there's the metal family that's all blood related. And we're like the best friend who lives next door who gets invited to all the family <laughs> functions. We're just metally enough. <laughs> just, just metal adjacent. Yeah, like there's just a there's enough grind and fuzz and like groove and like attitude that the, 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 the our metal friends go, yes, you are invited. <laughs> and they let us in and we feel like, thank you. <laughs> On va parler un petit peu de, de vous particulièrement, de, de vous personnellement. Euh, quand vous étiez plus jeune, plus petit, à quel moment vous avez rencontré le métal À quel moment vous avez rencontré les musiques extrêmes, en tout cas rock un peu plus poussé Do you remember what was the first encounter with metal or heavy music? When maybe when you were a kid with your family, uh, older brother, older <laughs> sister. Friend, like, uh, An encounter with metal. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I had metal in my life from a young age, just growing up with a family that loved rock and roll. Okay. And like some of my family even listened to like Judas Priest. And it was like, they liked that like early metal, but my own relationship really kicked in with it uh, as a kid in, in uh, I mean, maybe elementary school, grade like six, yeah. five, but really like in junior high for me, grade seven, maybe being, what is that? Uh, 11 years old, 12 years yeah, old, 11, 13 12, years yeah. old. So just becoming a teenager and really, really being into like Metallica. And yeah, it was really, Master of Puppets for me, definitely. Yeah, Master and just going back and then the Misfits and then Anthrax was huge for me and Slayer. These acts became it, at a time of life where it was so angsty and my parents don't understand me <laughs> and I come from a divorced family and I don't like any of these people that are around me and I'm on my own in this life. It's just me and Anthrax and my guitar and my bike and this is my life. And it <laughs> felt like this is my friend. Right. Like I, literally with And Justice For All, I remember riding around with the Walkman with the headphones on on my bike listening to And Justice For All and feeling like Metallica is my only friend. This is my best friend. And you knew that, you, that it was time for you to go down that route by the time a cutting the sleeves off of your t-shirts <laughs> i did have a, a. i had iron maidens uh, aces high t-shirt cut all the way down <laughs> does your child cut the sleeves off of their t-shirts a and b are they smoking cigarettes while they watch cartoons in the morning <laughs> <laughs> if they have an iron main shirt cut like this your child does smoke i'm just letting you know <laughs> donc ça vous a vraiment euh, envoûté, c'est ce qui vous a donné euh, clairement aussi envie de faire de la musique. It, it, it kind of enchanted you and get you in the the, uh, the the will to start playing music and go on stage. I think that the enchantment for me was really 
listening to music that sounded like it came from somewhere really far away. Really? Though, okay. Because as a, as a kid, when you're, you know, and I know it was the same for Scott because we talk about it, but when you can get more exposure to different types of music, mm -hmm. hearing the metal or, you know, listening to like Master Puppets, listening to that and going like, whoa, where are these guys coming from? Yeah. Mm. Where where the fuck oh, was yeah. this recorded? What are the, yeah. whoa. And I had to go there because probably so much like you, our families listen to rock and roll, but you know what? They were a little afraid of the other stuff. Really? Like they would listen to the the some of the metal, but when I started to get into like Slayer and Anthrax or Megadeth or any of this, that was just too much for them. And you know what? As a teenager, that's it's exactly great. what you need. Yeah. <laughs> it felt great. Like, you know, that's how it probably always was. You had people listening to Lawrence Welk, and then here comes, you know, like Elvis Presley, and then the Beatles, and it was not for the parents. And mm. that's why it appealed extra, extra, you know? C'est ça, on n'a pas envie d'être nos parents. De toute façon, je pense que personne n'a envie de ressembler à ses parents. Au début? Yeah, we just don't want to be our parents, but that's we right. end up maybe being a bit like... like Even that. if our parents are cool. Even <laughs> if your parents are cool, and, you know, my parents exposed me to music just like yours did, Scott. And you can like a lot of the same things, but you need something that's for you. Mm. That's right. Something that's just yours that's going to alienate them. It's part of the growth process, you know. Et est-ce que vous pensez que la communauté uh, metal a quelque chose? <laughs> that's for me. Okay. <laughs> it's time to take your medicine. Time, time is up. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> est-ce que vous pensez que la communauté metal elle a quelque chose en plus uh, que les autres communautés que le rap? Que... Est-ce qu'elle a quelque chose de plus fort, de plus intense? Do you feel like the uh, the heavy music community is a bit different from other communities of any genre, or is it? Um, how do you feel the connection with this uh, this crowd? I, I do feel that it is different. Um, there's something about metal, I think, that is that the community identifies itself as something very specific, and the metal community is so passionate. Um, but one thing that's different about other genres with other genres, there's an insecurity maybe in terms of identification, mm -hmm. but with metal, it's very much about identification. Yeah. This is who we are. And, you know, you can get 10 metal heads together that like different si types of metal and they'll love each other for it, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a unification there. And I feel like that point of distinction being so apparent. It helps with identification and it helps the community. Et du coup, vous sentez-vous quand vous êtes sur scène qu'il y a aussi un retour de ce public qui, uh, qui est fort, qui vous nourrit? Can you, can you feel that feedback from the crowd when you go on stage? Like today uh, at Hellfest, do you feel like there's something? Like <laughs> absolutely. A... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was thinking about this while Dre was speaking, uh, having this feeling like uh, we've been playing Hellfest. We played in Denmark, we played Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Hell, all this hell and evilness everywhere. <laughs> and I look at the audiences and they're having the best time. They're smiling. They're like getting along so well. The crews are so beautiful backstage and wonderful. It's the least hellish places we go. No one ever gets hurt at metal festivals. Mm. Everyone's like gets along. People get in these huge, crazy mosh pits and pick each other up. Yeah, It's an extraordinary thing. It's like I have this concept that like the people that play metal music, they dress like the heaviest and scariest they're they're actually living out a cathartic situation where they're getting it out so when you address them as people they're like wonderful people mm. they're like yeah they are they are repressed they're not repressed so you get to these these are not repressed people everybody in the audience has their makeup and their outfits on and they're like getting it out the anger the sadness anything that's in their body or just the joy they're in the mosh pit doing it <laughs> they're together doing it so i feel that from the metal audience and i feel like that's extraordinarily different at these metal fests and i'm super proud to be a part of it and i always feel the energy exchange with them yeah People, people seem to agree with you, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> C'est quelque chose qui nous fait rester jeunes pour pour toujours. Le, le métal, la musique, en règle générale d'ailleurs. Is, is it a useless remedy for you to play metal, to play heavy music? Well, music it's general. not just metal. It's just music. I think we always say music's the fountain of youth. It keeps you in a, a fresh mindset um, to listen to it. A, but B, getting to be practitioners and to be on stage. And we get to travel the world and you play music with your best friends every night mm. and you hang out on a bus on a pirate ship and you're laughing and telling jokes and just fucking around all the time. I think 
that is a recipe um, for eternal youth. Ce qui est dommage parce qu'il y a quand même pas mal de, de gens quand ils deviennent adultes, ils ont des enfants, ils ont une vie qui est complexe et du coup ils laissent tomber la musique. J'avais envie de parler de ça parce que je ressens que avec des groupes comme vous, justement, cette ouverture à rester accroché à la musique et à la vie est importante. Especially when you grow old, sometimes growing old, you're like, I have to quit playing music, I have to quit spending so much time with friends, just jamming around, playing shows for 10 people. Uh, but for you guys, you are still carrying the torch and, and going on stage, though as years pass by, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the yeah, one. I mean, uh, <laughs> It's so weird this era we're in right now. We're seeing uh, uh, rock bands and these groups carry it on literally forever. Yeah. Mm. How old are the Rolling Stones right now? We just saw our dear friends in Deep Purple. These guys, everybody, mm. these guys are all turned like 80s and 90s. We've never seen this in history. They're carrying it on forever. And I'm looking at these guys. Deep Purple's still in their 70s, but. Yeah. I'm looking at, at Deep Purple and uh, they're like, it's the fountain of youth. Well, you look at it, you know, these are bands that came around at the, the flashpoint, like the birth of what we think of as yeah. rock music, you know, someone like the Stones or, the, you know, there's other bands. I think that when, when they know what it feels like, and I mean, I know what it feels like, and there's no fucking way I'm ever going to stop. Yeah, I'll never right. stop doing this because I can do it for free. Or I can do it in front of an audience, but I'll always do it because it's at no expense to me and it generates so much joy. And so you see like the Rolling Stones, you see everybody. We're watching them that, you know, there was like a, a predisposed like expiration date or something where what they should hang their guns and stop being yeah, happy. Right. Like, why we, would you do that? We live in an era where that went away. Like, mm. even if you see the real famous interview with Mick Jagger at the beginning of the Stones, they were like a year into it. Yeah, how long do you see yourself doing this? And he thought mm. it was just a joke to be doing it for like four more years. Like it was comical or whatever. I don't know how many years he says, but it's like a very short span of time. Like, I can't, I'm going to go into like, be a, do a professional job mm. like into advertising you or whatever. Like, this is just me being a kid. Well, all of a sudden, that job turned into something completely different, didn't it? And he made this huge amount of wealth and fame. And, like, he was carrying something different than he even thought he was picking up. You know, it turned into something totally different. We come from an era now that it's, that's normal. So the way I look at it is uh, we make art. We mm. perform together. It's something very pure for us. It's a, it's a thing we get to do as a service. We get to, like give this music to people and it provides a service for us to survive our families and even if it wasn't the biggest money making or fame making machine the the action of it is so wonderful for us it's such a great exchange of course we're going to do it as long as we can as long as we have our vitality yeah <laughs> en tout cas on sent euh, cette force et euh, je vous félicite pour la musique que vous faites parce que c'est vrai quand on vous écoute euh, on a juste envie de vous rejoindre et de et de, de faire partie du groupe hein. ça de faire partie de votre équipe yeah can we, we can really feel the energy and when we listen to your songs when when we see them live we just want to join you in this big party and have a good time with you guys yeah well then join it you know that's <laughs> that's what we're here to do is to is to connect that energy with everybody And for us, you know, we get on stage every time we hit the stage We're we're playing for us. Mm. And even though you guys are there and the, the audience is really large, it has to begin with us yeah, and our yeah. communication and our energy, you know, the, just the band coming together. But um, the audience is fantastic and we definitely appreciate you guys. <laughs> and you're amazing. So thank you. For your music, thank keep for going. Your <laughs> again, again, again. And what else? <laughs> And marvelous, beautiful. Yes, everything we, we can say. <laughs> we. You should. You should do the end. The end. <laughs> the end. Humble. Entrance to yes. our yes. fest. Welcome to the marvelous. <laughs> yes. The fantastic. The yes. incredible. incredible yes. Rival songs. <laughs> These are our guys right here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You hire these it. are our guys. <laughs> no, mean, Backstage passes for these guys over here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> merci énormément en tout cas d'avoir pris du temps de, de, de répondre à nos questions et merci de faire de la musique. Thank you very much for your time and for your music. Merci yes, beaucoup. thank you for all of the compliments. Thank you. Thank you.